Hey YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with the next episode in my Let's Make a Retro Game series. Um, now, this particular episode, we really need to get down into the um, into the guts of it, and unfortunately, uh, can't put off this bit any longer. But we have to start learning some assembly code. Uh, this series is on it is using assembly code uh, for the different machines, um, and the majority of the systems that we're covering actually use the Z80 processor. Um, and I consider the Z80 assembler a little easier to learn than, say, 6502 because um, it holds your hand a little bit more. Uh, but we will be covering 6502 at a later date when we get to the, um, the other systems that we're going to cover with the game. But we're going to work our way all the way through um, for the first lot of systems all using Z80. So Z80 has to come first. Um, I'm only going to be covering the basics. So let's go on. So I'm going to, to help you on. Um, so in this episode, we're just going to cover um, how you store things and move things around using the CPU, um, how you add things up, subtract things, um, and a couple of functions like that just to get started. Suggested reading to go along with this is to either um, buy yourself or a, get an um, electronic copy of Programming the Z80 or a similar book. There are actually quite a few books out there, but this is the book that is recommended again and again by um, uh, people talking about the Z80. There are also quite a few good online resources for the Z80, and they're all there's heaps of them. I'm not going to list any particular ones here, um, but there are you know quite a few you can go and have a look at. Alright, so let's get into it. So, the very first thing we need to cover is memory and registers. Because um, at the end of the day, programming is all about moving ones and zeros around from one place to the other. Um, and there are two places inside a um, computer where you store those things. There are registers which are actually inside the CPU themselves. Um, and used by the CPU to add numbers up and manipulate information inside uh, those numbers and then the actual memory space. Now the memory space can include the RAM and the ROM inside the system. ROM is read-only memory and RAM is um, random access memory which means you can write to it and actually save information in there. So here's a bit of a diagram that helps that out. So the yellow space is inside the CPU, so the registers are inside the actual CPU itself. And you have a control unit, which handles the instructions, an arithmetic unit, which adds things up. And then outside of that, you have the main memory, which consists of some RAM and some ROM. And depending on the various systems we're looking at, um, they're all 8-bit systems, so they all have what's called a 64K memory space. Uh, but that's not all RAM and that's not all ROM, it depends on the system. As an example, the Coleco only has 1K of RAM um, and it has, uh, an, I think it's an 8K ROM um, and the rest of it's all um, open and used for other things. The cartridge that you're programming the system in has to sit somewhere, so that sits in the memory space somewhere, so that would be called uh, ROM. But also, various systems you can have RAM inside the cartridge. Uh, the computers have a lot more RAM available um, and if you add it all up it actually adds up to more than 64K so you then have to start switching things in and out. We are not going to cover that at this stage of the tutorial. Um, I may cover that in like an extension episode later on as we're, we're not really going to need that for our game. Okay now the registers. Now the first we'll cover the, uh, the Z80 has both 8 and 16 bit registers. Um, so we'll cover the 8 bit registers first. So the most important one is the accumulator. Uh, the accumulator is used for, uh, for, it's the workhorse of the CPU, so it does most of the jobs you need to do. So adding numbers together, subtracting them, uh, moving the ones and zeros around inside there and transferring things from one place to another. So it's a very important register and you'll be using it all the time. Um, but we have some more. We have B, um, quite often used as a counter. Um, C um, is, is quite often used in some of the statements for dealing with ports. Now, ports are interfaces from the CPU out to things and de to devices like your joysticks, uh, the video display, the sound um, output and things like that. 
but all of these registers can be used for more than one purpose. So, um, but th there are certain instructions that can only be used with certain ones, and that's why these are listed as as I'm doing them at the moment. So D is normally used with E, and E is normally used with D, but you can still use them singly. I'll explain some more about that when we get to 16B. Um, F is the flag uh, is is one register, but it holds all of the flags. Now flags are signals of a particular condition. So one of the conditions is zero. Um, you know when you compared something previously, was it zero? Um, C for, is the carry flag. Another one that's used a lot is when um, say you added two numbers together and the total added up to more than eight bits. So it would have carried over, uh, and that's what the carry flag does. There are more flags. We'll get into those later. H is another register not normally used in 8-bit form, but you can. And L used with H, once again, not normally used in 8-bit form. There are more. Uh, I is the interrupt vector register. Won't really be covering it in any detail in this tutorial. R is the refresh register. Same thing. Now, I hates H, not normally used singly at all. Um, but there's a special 16-bit register called the IX register and IXH and IXL are the two parts of that one and it's the same for I, I, IYH and IYL okay so they're all listed singly but some of these uh, so the Z80 even though it's an 8-bit processor actually has quite powerful 16-bit instructions which we'll cover now so 16-bit registers all right AF, not normally used as a 16-bit register, but just included for completeness. So that's a combination of the accumulator and the flags. Right, BC, quite often used as a byte counter, because there are certain Z80 instructions that automatically use that to count, uh, count down bytes and loops. Uh, DE, and this is where it gets its lettering from, so DE commonly stands for destination. And HL is the real is the workhorse of the 16-bit registers it acts as the accumulator for 16-bit mass and it's used to identify and point to an address pc is the program counter so that's the spot you are up to in your actual program that's executing you can't change it except with special instructions sp is the stack pointer i will cover the stack later um, but just think of it's an another way to easily um, push and pop things off uh, like you add a st piece of paper to a stack of paper that's, um, and then you put the st pieces of paper on the desk and then you've got to take them off in the same order that you put them on not in reverse of course now IX is an index register so it's useful for going and getting something with an index associated to so get something at this address plus this many bytes and IY is a similar register um, and it has some other secondary functionality. Once again, probably won't be covering that in specific detail. But this is just an overview of all of the 16-bit registers that you've got with the Z80. Quite a few. Um, still, obviously, you know, maybe confusing and extra reading is recommended. I'll try and explain things as best as I can. So, now, let's get into moving stuff around. So, moving stuff from memory to registers and from registers to registers. So the base, you have one statement to do that, and it's called LD, standing for load. And you have the target on the left, a comma, and then where you're getting it from on the right. And then this can take many forms. So well, target, this is where the information will end up, and source, this is where the information comes from. Um, so some examples. So straight load, load A with 5. So what that does is it takes the number, the actual number 5, and puts it into A, the accumulator. So afterwards, the accumulator would contain 5. So that's called a direct statement. Then the next one, load A with, and this is what the brackets signify, the brackets signify a, an address in memory. And this particular form here with the dollar sign in front of it means hexadecimal. So that's going to the address C000 which is the start of the um, top 16k of our memory space uh, where RAM will usually be in most of the computer systems not necessarily for some of the consoles 
Now, next example. We load HL with the value, because it's 16 bit, we need a 16 bit number, so it's an address, C, triple zero, and then we use the load A, comma, in brackets HL. Once again, the brackets signify we're specifying an address. So go and use HL, look up where in memory that is, and go and get the contents of that. So if the memory location C triple zero had the value five, we would end up with five in the accumulator again. Um, now, other way around, we can go and take what is in the accumulator and go and store it in a memory address. Or once again, with the HL register around the other way, we could set the HL register to a memory address, and then we can go and store what's in A in that memory address. Now, there are some other combinations. Uh, with most of the single 8-bit registers, you can use exactly the same as um, the uh, you know load a comma five. You could go load d comma five. You can also transfer most of the registers to a, and the and most of the registers from a into them. So um, you could go load a comma e, and that would transfer e into a, and you could load e comma a the other way around. So. Um, but not all combinations are there. You can't go straight from um, L to H and things like that. You need to go through the accumulator. That's a couple of extra steps. Um, and most of the websites have a matrix of what you're allowed to do. Now, let's do a bit of maths. So, 8-bit maths first. This is what most 8-bit processors do. Have 8-bit maths. So, addition. The basic syntax is add a comma and then a source. So add to it um, something. So in the first example, we oh, and this demonstrates most of the combina combinations. So I set up some values first. This first part here, load a comma five puts five in a. Load hl with that address, and then we store what's in a in that address. So this address ends up with five. I then clear out A. That's not the most efficient way of doing that, but I'm not introducing other instructions just yet. I then I load B with 5. Now let's do our mass. Add A, add 5 to A. Now remember A, A was 0, so now A is 5. Add A with the contents of B. And that B contains 5, so now A would be 10. Add A with the contents of the memory location pointed to by H children. Now remember we put 5 in there so that would add another 5 to A and A would end up being 15. And that demonstrates most of the combinations that you can use. Now subtraction. Um, instead of having specifically saying which uh, register. Now the reason why A is named here because you can use the add instructions for 16-bit maths as well. Now the sub instruction is not used for 16-bit maths so to save you typing, but it adds a little bit of confusion, you don't specify a register. You just go sub 5 will take 5 from the accumulator. Sub B will subtract the contents of B from the accumulator. And sub in brackets HL will subtract the contents of the memory location pointed to by HL from the accumulator. You can't sub and put a direct memory address in there. That's one of those instructions that's not allowed. You've got to fill, put HL first, and you can't do this with D or BC either. So you can see the ZLD instruction set is quite extensive, but you can't do every combination everywhere because the, you can only have so many instructions in the processor. Right now, on to 16 bit maths. Um, so, first edition. Now, uh, this uses the add instruction again, and that's why a register was specified because HL takes on the role of the accumulator for 16 bit maths. It can only interact with other 16 bit registers, though, no direct values. So, as an example, if we load HL with our 16 bit number here, which is commonly a memory address, so C000, and we load DE with this number here. So one triple zero, and then we add DE to HL. So this would end up with HL containing D triple zero. I've done the maths here, um, so it's easy to see what's happening. Right now, subtraction. 
uh, introduces a complexity because remember before in 8-bit MOS there was only a subtraction statement for 8-bit. Uh, well there's another subtraction statement which you can also use for 8-bit but it includes the ca um, carries. So the statement stands for subtract with carry and this can either be the H register or the A register as, as I mentioned before but on the right hand side for 16-bit you can only have a register. So as an example, we load HL with our C000 and DE with our 1000. Now I'm going to introduce another statement here. Well, I'm going to use OR A. Now the OR statement, um, if you imagine the ones and zeros in a register or memory location, if you OR something with itself, uh, or sorry, when you OR something with something, you take all of the ones in either of the numbers and the combination of those is your resultant number. So anytime there's a 1, you can keep a 1. So if you OR a number with itself, it's going to end up with exactly the same number because both um, of the copies of the, of, the, of the number are exactly the same, have the same number of bits on, so you just end up with the same number. So doing OR A doesn't affect A whatsoever, but it clears all of the flags. It gets rid of, it clears the zero flag and it clears the carry flag, and which in this particular case the carry flag is what we want to clear. In other processes, because they don't actually have a normal add and a normal subtract without carry, um, like 6502, they have a specific instruction to set and clear the carry flag. But on the Z80 there's no specific instruction to do it, so we need, we have to do it using other statements. Now there are more statements that affect the carry flag, but the easiest one that doesn't destroy anything is all A. So you could still have something in A and it's not going to get hurt by this statement. And then we use the subtract with carry HL from DE, so that will take C000 and take away 1000, giving us the answer of B000. If we didn't clear the carry flag, whatever code we had before this may have set the carry flag and then we wouldn't get the answer that we were expecting. Okay, now one more set of instructions for this episode. Um, if you want to increase and decrease a uh, register or a memory location by one, uh, by only one, which happens a lot when you're uh, going around in loops and working through a bit of memory or just simply counting through a loop and you want to decrease your counter. Um, now you could do that with the alpha instructions, you could just add one to the accumulator or you could subtract one from the accumulator or the 16-bit um, accumulator. But what if you wanted to, um, you know, um, subtract one from B? You'd have to put the value of B in A and then you'd have to subtract one from that and then you'd have to put that back into B. So as you can see it's quite a few instructions and you, you use this a lot so there were uh, the designers of most of the CPUs um, added quick instructions for incrementing and decrementing both registers and memory. These sort of instructions are available in 6502 and other assemblers as well. So, increment, it's very simple. You can increment a register, and it's any register, either an 8 bit register or a 16 bit register, uh, with exceptions of the um, stack pointer and program counter. Or you can increment the the contents of the memory address pointed to by HL and only HL. And decrement has exactly the same statements except it's dec. So you can decrement any of the registers or decrement the memory ad uh, address pointed to by HL. So when I say any of the registers, it can be A, B, C, D, E, H, or L. Um, or any of the 16-bit combinations of those, so B, C, D, E, and H, L, and also I, X, and I, Y, but not their separate um, versions. All right, now that's about all for this episode because I don't want these episodes to get too long. We will have to do one more episode on actually Z80 Assembler where I'm going to cover branches and bit manipulation and a few other statements that will be useful. Really important to get this out of the way so we can get right into our code and I can work through code unless you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so one more episode on Z80 and then I promise we'll get back to our game. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. 
please feel free to comment down below. There will be a link down below to an article on my website containing the contents of this episode with a little bit more detail and some more examples. Um, obviously no specific sample code for this particular one, but there will be in future episodes. But, uh, feedback is always welcome. I'm Electric Adventures, hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.